Well, before we get to our next guests, who are a couple fascinating people, I want to introduce you to another fascinating person. He's the controller of the Superstation's money. And I'm talking about uh, Chuck Schultz in our studio audience tonight. There he is. Chuck, if you could raise your hand so we can see you. There you are. Okay, there he is out there. Nice to see you. He, uh, Chuck uh, has stopped by uh, because he was in line to get on the Merv show, but the audience was full, so he came over here. Very nice. Nice. Here is an 850-page book which is stuffed with information about free chemical radicals and how peroxides interface with your lipofuscans. I think. Hardly the stuff, is that right? Yeah. Hardly the stuff from which uh, bestsellers are made, but this is a best-selling book. And our next guests have indeed written, as we said, a bestseller. Let us introduce you to Sandy Shaw and Dirk Pearson, who have written Life Extension, A Practical Scientific Approach. And here they are. And now, if you just tuned in, you might think this is World Championship Wrestling. <laughs> but it isn't. It's well, who am I, then? <laughs> <laughs> the referee. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Very good. But uh, this is your standard outfit to... Uh, oh, for sure. Bendy horseshoes. Uh, Bendy. One, right. You see, one of the things we want to explain to people is that if you understand some of the mechanisms of your biochemistry, how your body works, what it does with various nutrients, you can get it to do a lot more than you ever believe possible. Uh, for example, it's possible to lose a very large amount of fat and put on a lot of muscle with very little exercise if you use certain nutrients that you can get in health food stores that cause the release of growth hormone from a gland in your brain called the pituitary gland. To get ready for the publicity tour, I started doing 30 seconds worth of exercise a day, having taken an amino acid, a nutrient called ornithine, about an hour 30 beforehand. seconds of exercise 30 a day. 30 seconds of exercise a day, right. Is there a way to do the exercise here? Because we got uh, I, I had a couple of 30-pound dumbbells I could do it. That's all that's involved. Don't look at me. <laughs> 30 <laughs> seconds worth. In a period of two months, I lost 10 pounds of fat and put on 8 pounds of muscle. Now, of course, a bathroom scale only shows the difference. So what we do, we make measurements with a device called a skinfold caliper. This is a standard measuring I've device that yeah. those Olympic those. sports doctors and so forth use. On a male, okay. you make two measurements. One is made down here in the front of the thigh. All right. The other measurement is made just below the shoulder blade. And what is it? What exactly does that tell you? Well, you plug these two numbers into a paper from the Journal of Applied Physiology, and it tells you what percentage body fat you have. I have 9.5% of my body is fat. That is typical for Olympic track and field athletes, not a 40-year-old sedentary scientist who pigs out on gourmet food every day. Yeah, if you just use a bathroom scale, it's not going to really be a very good guide to what condition your body is in. Because if you weigh 150 but half of your body is fat, you're not in very good shape. And if you look at the ideal weight charts, Arnold Schwarzenegger is 50 pounds overweight. But it's, it's muscle, muscle, not fat. Right. Sandy, for example, uh, in a period of six weeks, exercising two minutes a day, lost 25 pounds of fat and put on five pounds of muscle. Now, to put this in context, Arnold Schwarzenegger, in education of a bodybuilder, said that a dedicated male bodybuilder working out hours a day will find it difficult to put on five pounds of muscle a year as an adult. Mm -hmm. The reason for that is, as an adult, beyond 30, you do not release growth hormone as a result of exercise. Injury, however, will do it. Hence, you have the bodybuilder slogan, no pain, no gain. You actually have to tear their muscles a little bit to get the growth hormone much easier just to take the nutrients, get the growth hormone release, and a few minutes or even 30 seconds of exercise will do more good for you than hours of conventional Does exercise. Does the book show the exercise you're supposed to do? Doesn't make much of any difference what you do as long as it's peak output type exercise. You have to do enough to sort of tire yourself out in that short period of time. In 30 seconds? Well, for example, if you take a couple of 30 pound dumbbells and do this yeah. at about that rate, believe me, in 30 seconds, you'll be yeah. tired out. The exercise that a person does, the muscles just send signals to the brain. The action takes place in the brain. That's where the benefits of exercise really take place. And the growth hormone release that you can uh, achieve using these nutrients is essentially what a, a bodybuilder gets who works out hours a day in a gym. In fact, bodybuilders swear by chicken meat rather than beef to build big muscles. Chicken meat has much more arginine and ornithine in it than does beef, and that's undoubtedly the reason it works so well. Uh, a lot of bodybuilders are using these techniques nowadays. In fact, Ben Wider, the president of the International Federation of Bodybuilders, sent us an unsolicited rave letter about our book. He's gone on our program, and I think we're going to see spectacular results in the 84 Olympics from people using these techniques. Sandy, you was... Dirk mentioned you work out two minutes a day? Yeah, well, actually, uh, I've shortened that down to one minute a day. Um, 
I just really don't uh, care to exercise all that much. But using just one minute of exercise a day. You don't, you don't want to work out uh, a minute a day. And the and the ornithine, the growth hormone releasing nutrient. <clears throat> Uh-oh. Uh, I've uh, really been able to build up some very strong muscles, and uh, I'd like to do a little demonstration. These are high-strength alloy steel, thoroughbred racing horseshoes, size 7, the largest they make. You can see they're not aluminum. All right. And, uh, can I see? Sure. sure can. Okay. Yes, they are real. Okay. <laughs> I'll bend one of them. Really? Can I? All right. What a girl. Let me try that. Maybe go ahead. Here. <laughs> okay. All right. But she's... she's hey, good. pretty hey. good. Not that pretty is good. good. How long do you work out Congratulations. I work out an hour and 15 minutes a day. <laughs> hour really? Well, she works rather? out a minute a day sometimes. If you took these nutrients and worked out an hour and 15 minutes a day, I think you could probably get into the Women's Nationals Bodybuilder Contest. God, you know, it's something I've always wanted to do. I really admire that. I like that very no, much. No, unfortunately, <laughs> I don't think that's for me. Incidentally, this growth hormone that we're talking so much about is also extremely important to the function of the immune system. The immune system is what protects you against cancer, cardiovascular disease, and infectious diseases like bacterial and viral how infections. How many vitamins do you each take a day? Mm, a couple of dozen different items. All types of vitamins, minerals, amino acids. Oh, about two ounces of material. Every day. Yes, every day. Four now, times a day, actually. It's possible to get a substantial percentage it's of that benefit from much lower it? dose. I mean, it's great to you know, Well, do it, it depends on what you're trying to achieve. Remember, we're doing research. If you just want a good practical program, it can cost a lot less. Fifty cents or a dollar's worth of supplements a day can drastically reduce your chances of cardiovascular disease or cancer. On the basis of the data that we've seen both from human beings and from animal experiments, it looks like you can reduce your chances of cancer, for example, by at least 80%. Very, very simple means. Increasing the amount of antioxidant nutrients you have in your diet, such as vitamin E and vitamin C, either by eating the right things or much easier than changing your diet by just taking the supplements, uh, stopping smoking and being moderate in your use of alcohol, and reducing the amount of fats, particularly polyunsaturated fats that you take, because fats are very easily attacked by these free radicals, particularly polyunsaturated fats, are being dangerous in this respect. But you really have to clean up your act. I mean, you can't... Uh, well, it's no. amazing how, how much she... The thing is, it's better if you stop smoking, for example. But even if you don't stop smoking, you can reduce your risk of cardiovascular disease and cancer very markedly, even if you continue to smoke. For example, in a 19-year study at the Western Electric Plant in Chicago, they found that... This is on 2,000 men. 2,000 men. 38,000-man-year study. This is a big study. Um, they found that the men that were smoking, no matter how long they had been smoking, if they got an above-average amount of beta-carotene in their diet, and that's the stuff that makes carrots orange, they beta, had no... Beta carotene. They had no more risk of lung cancer than non-smokers who were getting below average amounts of beta carotene in their diet. Now the beta carotene, while it apparently provides extremely good protection against lung cancer from smoking, does not provide protection against the cardiovascular disease. You can go a long way to protecting yourself from this by increasing your doses of vitamin C and vitamin B6, selenium, vitamin B1. These are things that are reduced in quantity in people who smoke. Do either of you ever get sick like a cold or flu or anything like that? Very oh, rarely. Sure. Occasionally yeah. I wake up with a little bit of post-nasal drip and then I just take more of the uh, immune system boosting nutritional supplement, things like vitamin C and ornithine, and usually by the afternoon it's gone and I don't, I'll, I really never know whether it was a little touch of an allergy or whether I actually had something for a few hours. You actually have to get sick every now and then because you, that's how your immune system develops immunity to different things. Thanks. However, the degree that you get sick is a different matter entirely. Uh, for example, if you give a person half a gram of vitamin C three times a day, not a gram and a half once a day, that doesn't do anything in any of the studies I've seen because it leaves your body so fast, but half a gram three times a day decreases the frequency of colds and upper respiratory infectious disease. But much more impressive than that, it decreases the number of days lost from work or lost from school by a much larger percentage than the percentage decrease in the number of colds. In other words, it reduces the severity much more than it reduces your chance of getting it. And if you have a cold that's so mild it doesn't interfere with anything you're doing, that's a heck of a lot better deal than one that has you on your back in bed. we got to take a quick break, and then we're going to come back and talk more with uh, Sandy and Dirk. And Constance will be back, uh, and she's going to bend some more horseshoes. <laughs> Stay with us. More about life extension. <laughs> 